Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Whew, sorry it took so long to get back to you. It's been kind of, well, you know what it's like. Everybody's on the same page right now. At any rate, you know, ordering parts, they take a little longer. A whole bunch of things are a little more difficult than usual. I'm just glad they're working at all and, and we're still on the same side of the grass. Anyway. Um, if you're enjoying our videos, by all means, please subscribe if you haven't already. And when you do subscribe, by all means, please tap on the little notification bell so you'll be notified every time we put up a new video. And right now, this is us doing a new video. I got a lot of requests for lacing wheels, and so we're going to lace a wheel. Um, Lacing a wheel is a kind of a long-winded project for me. Uh, people who do it all day long can do it in a matter of minutes. I cannot. I've done it a lot, but not every day like some people. Um, so I'm going to try to show you some of the ins and outs and how I do this. I also brought my, my trusty little music stand out because I love to refer to the book. And I'm referring to the book mostly so that I don't skip any steps and I bring out the most important points of this thing. A lot of people say, well, I can lace a wheel, I just can't true it. Really? If you lace a wheel and you hand it to someone to true, it's almost impolite because if it's laced really nicely, it's easy to true. So, Anyway, that's just the way I see it. So, alrighty, I have, I, I bought this new hub. This is for the project bike. I ordered this new hub. This is, uh, this hub looks like a typical old uh, star hub. The only thing is, which would be 1936 to 1966. All, they were all the star hubs on the big twins. And... I love the looks of the Star Hub, but I really like the easy servicing of Timken bearings. So I order these hubs, which are reproductions. The main difference being they have Timken bearings in them, and they're quite easy to service, repack with grease and all the normal stuff. Whereas the old original Star Hubs, they had loose roller bearings in. In them, and as the bearing surface would wear, you would use a slightly larger roller bearing in them. I prefer to be able to throw away a set of Timkins and put new ones in. Okay, now that being said, we're going to start uh, at the uh, El Camino swap meet a few months ago. I bought this Barani alloy rim because I like them. <clears throat> this was a real nice one I bought from a real nice guy. Uh, it's a 19-inch rim. This is going to be the front wheel on the project big flathead bike. Um, the reason I picked a 19 rather than a 21 like I normally would is the tire I want is not made in 21-inch size. The tallest they make it in is a 19. <clears throat> so a 19 it is so I can use that tire. Not going to talk about the tire for now because right now we're just doing a wheel. Now when I get ready to do a wheel, uh, I call up and I order spokes. When I order spokes, I say, okay, I'm using a star hub and that pattern is the same on most of the big hubs all the way up to present, the lacing pattern. The only difference is the front wheels like on Sportsters and Dynas that use that flat pattern where the nipples or the the heads of the spokes all show this is not like that this is your typical old harley type steel hub um, then you tell them that you're putting it on a 19 inch rim and it's a shallow center it's not a if you look at, at stock rims you'll see a real deep relief in here and that's a what we call a drop center rim and this rim is not a big drop center. It's a shallow drop center. So I have a Barani shallow drop center using a star hub. And I need spokes for this thing. It's a, it's a Barani 19. 
And that's how I would spec this whole thing. And they would and did send me a set of spokes. I'm not advertising for any spoke company or any other company. Uh, these are, however, Buchanan spokes. There's nothing unusual about that. They are polished stainless steel, which is my preference. Um, what I do when I get them is I'll take two spokes and put them straight across from each other and put them into the appropriate holes just to say, yes, these appear to be the right length spoke. I got what I was asking for. Okay, that being done and said, we'll start lacing this wheel. Now, I do it with a book open so that hopefully I won't forget to say things. And to be quite honest, I won't forget to do things. I'm not perfect. I think everybody already agreed to that. <laughs> now, because the spokes are stainless steel and the nipples are stainless steel, the two materials would gall when you put them together. We need some real metal compatibility here. So what we're using is some anti-seize that is supplied with these spokes. And I will coat all the threads and get started. Now, the way I do this is pretty much like the book recommends, which is 10 at a time. You have 40 spokes, you start by doing 10. Okay, let's start here at the very beginning. Place hub on bench with brake drum end of hub up. The brake drum will go on this side of the hub, so there it is. It is facing up. Make sure I got enough of this uh, anti seize on here. Overdoing this is just fine. This is real good stuff to do. All right. And if you get it on you, it is gooey. Okay, so we've got it the right side up. Now, if it were a genuine star hub, it would have a grease nipple in it, or zerk fitting, and we would put it at right angles to the valve on the rim. Let's see where the valve is. There it is. Okay, so if we had a, let's see, there would be a Zerk fitting right here. So we'll just put it at a 90 degree to it, or straight across from it, excuse me. But on the inner row of spoke holes, can you show that with the camera? This is the inner set of holes. So what we're going to do. If we look at this carefully, what does it say? It says, it says to swing the loose end of the spokes counterclockwise as far as the hub will allow without turning the hub. So we're going to slide the spoke in here. And then we're going to swing it counterclockwise. Now we're going to find a hole that lines up with that. And that would be right about there. Okay. Now we'll do the same thing and we're going to do it 10 times. Now we'll see, looking here, every fourth hole. Let's see they're at different angles. And this is the angle that the spoke goes in there. This is one of those things where you really have to pay attention because you want to get this thing done the way it was designed to be. Fourth hole again. Well, isn't that special? Fourth hole again. 
you got to go in from this side and then swing that spoke over <laughs> in a counterclockwise fashion. I think the Europeans say anti-clockwise as opposed to counterclockwise. Now at this point, I'm about ready to start putting the nipples on because the, the, the thing is going to start just falling apart on me. So let's get the nipples out. I'm going to do this and someone's going to write in and say, Mike, don't do that with your teeth. Which gives me a nice time to mention how much I've been enjoying all of the comments that I've gotten from people from all over the world. Sometimes I forget How wonderful people really are. And we're doing this just great. Like I was saying, once we uh, get all these nipples on here, they'll quit falling. The spokes will quit falling out. There we go. Now, what we need to do is get all 10 of these on. And a lot of people think this is difficult, and it really isn't. It just takes some patience. And I think we have all 10 of them on there. And they're all at the proper angle. Pretty cool. Now when this comes up like this, <laughs> Everything will go right into place. All right. I think that pretty much does it for now. What we're going to do next is the next 10 of them. So if we do the next 10, I think what I'll do is I'll get them out right now. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there's ten of them. I'll get them uh, anti seized here. And we'll go to the next step in the book here in a minute. And we'll get the next ten on there. All right. I'm putting this second uh, row of 10 in. We're still doing on the same side. So we're going to go in <laughs> exactly the opposite way. And then we're going to roll this thing over, move this spoke over. In a in a in a clockwise fashion. 
Let's see, did we do that right? I believe we did. I believe we did. What's really funny is when you screw up and you find out that you have to do it all over again. So there's one. Now we're going to try to do this in a, a, a sort of a, oh, time lapse sort of a thing so that you don't have to watch me put all 40 spokes in place. I mean, really? Who wants to watch Mike put 40 spokes in place? I don't. So there is two, three, four, five. Now, what do we have here? It says, okay, insert spokes and 10 inner. And then the, the, the other ones, they tell you to do the, the outers. And just start the nipples on them. Okay. Okay. Now, when I do a strange pattern wheel, a wheel that I don't know very well, then what I do... So I take a picture of it before I take it apart. But Harley wheels seem to main, stay pretty, uh, pretty consistent through the ages. There's seven. Eight. Nine. No, it was only eight. <laughs> Okay, we've got about just about all of these. I think I'll finish these up and uh, we'll get started on the other side. We're still at it and I'd like to mention that we're cutting in and out with the camera here because this is a rather lengthy procedure and I don't think everyone wants to watch it go on that long. But we've got We've got both sets of spokes on one side, that's 20. And the thing to remember on a Harley wheel and all these old things like this, what you want to do is you always have to cross over four spokes. In other words, the inners are going in that direction, the outers are going in that direction. It's crossing over one, two, three, four. When you're counting them, you got to remember to count that one in there on the hub as one. But anyway, so there we have it on that. I got to quit that. There we have it. Uh, somebody was picking on me for that. I don't know. My English isn't that bad. But so I'm going to get some uh, NICs on these 10 spokes. And as soon as I do, which I've almost got them, we can start these. Now, again, this is by the book, and I suggest anyone who's doing this, do it by the book. I'll never forget the first ones I did. I did on my own bike, and I took them to a local shop in Ventura because I mounted the tires on the wheels, too. 
And the guys were just expecting all sorts of funny things to happen when I did that, my first pair of wheels. I did them at home on the, on the coffee table in my living room. I got them done. I mounted the tires by hand. I took them down to the shop and they put them on their big electronic balancer and turned it on and neither wheel took any weight. Everything was true and nothing took any weight. Anyway, I don't know if I could still do that, but according to the book, turn rim and hub over, repeat operations two, three, five, and six, except in operation three, swing the spokes clockwise, and in operation five, counterclockwise. Well, all that's saying is what we did on the other side, only as we do this, we're going to swing these spokes these are the inners now, and we're going to swing them clockwise. Now, there it is, and it's going clockwise. And we'll go ahead and put a nipple on that. And we'll do this one the same way. Um, this piece of wood here is here for the purpose of me having to flex this thing as I go. And if you have to flex these things a little bit, so be it. That's the way it is. Um, especially these rims that aren't drop centers. These are a little bit harder to lace. I just wanted it. I saw it at the swap meet. I had to have it. I have alloy rims on the front of the other bikes, and I wanted one on this one, too. They're really lightweight. Okay, we've got... Uh, that one's fighting me. There it is. I gotta quit saying there it is. I suppose if you speak, you're gonna give people something to criticize. Okay. Now this one is almost in there. And there it goes in clockwise fashion. And I think what I'm going to do is continue lacing this wheel. There's four of them. I got six more to go. And I'm about ready to finish up the rest of them. And then we'll get on to the fourth set. Okay, we got the third row in here, and it was a little bit fun, but it's there. So now what we need to do is put the fourth row in, which is not as hard because it's on the outside row of holes here. So as we do that, we swing it over. One, two, three, four, crossing four. And we get down here and shock and amazement, that hole goes in exactly the right direction. Now you notice I had to push the, uh, the rim down somewhat to get that spoke in there. And there are 10 of them. I think I may even uh, put all 10 of them in right now. It's really maddening when you have one of these alloy rims that you're trying to keep beautiful and of course the end of the spoke scratches it as you put it in again one two three crossing four I don't know why, but I, I actually love building wheels. 
Oh, I know why. Look at them, they're cool. I like pretty things. And again, we just have to go in a clockwise manner, which is the opposite of the way the other side went. And that's why you follow it step by step in the book, and you'll get it right. It really appears a lot more complicated than it is. And any minute now, we'll have all 10 of these in here for a total of 40 spokes. <laughs> that was fun. I think I missed one, but no problem. We can go back and pick it up. It's right there. And I'm not going to say, and there it is. Or there you go. I don't know. But I'm having fun I'm building me a new wheel for my new motorcycle. Okay, we got to get that force down a little bit. This is why you're leaving all the spokes really loose until you get all of them in. And I believe... If I didn't know better, I'd say I lost one of these nipples here. Yes, I did. <laughs> That's funny. I have never known these people to short me anything. Therefore, I have lost one nipple. Luckily, I know I have a bunch of them out in the parts room. So that's okay. We're not going to worry about it. Unless I dropped it on the floor somehow. So we'll get this spoke in place. And we'll put that nipple on there if we can find it. And I don't believe I can. So I'll have to get another one. Uh, in the meantime, I think I'll go around and tighten up all of these nipples. Now, when I say tighten them, what I really mean is all I'm going to do is cover the threads. If you look, you'll notice there's an awful lot of threads on each one of these spokes. And in order to get a nice, even start, and that's what you want is a nice, even start, what you want to do is go around the wheel and just start tightening these things up. And if you tighten them up and tighten them up and tighten them up, then they're all tightening evenly. Right now it's like really easy to turn these. And I'll just go around randomly tightening the nipples down. I'm not going all the way with them. But I just want to get them all started real well and real straight. And... Uh, <laughs> there we go. This is a real interesting spoke wrench. Uh, Buchanan Spoke and Wheel has been in business 
as long as I can remember. And they have always made, or they've made spoke wrenches for a long time. One of the things that you might buy from them if you were buying other things from them. And I've had a number of spoke wrenches over the years, and they still make this one, but it's a, it's a beautifully finished one today. This one is so early, it's kind of crude looking, and I just love it. Kind of crude. And so we'll just go around and tighten all these up. And I got a feeling under that block of wood there's probably a nipple. And when we get all these done, all we're going to do is cover up the threads on each spoke. And again, by going round and round and sneaking up on them, they'll they'll automatically drop into, into fairly true all on their own. Then when we put it on the truing stand, it'll be a little easier to deal with than it would have been if we had tight spokes and loose spokes and loose spokes and tight spokes. We're getting them all nice and even here. You know, I'm going to pick that up and see if there's a nipple under there. No, there is not. But that's okay. Let me explain again. I'm going to go all the way around and get all of these spokes on here nice and even. When I have covered the threads completely, then it'll be ready to put on the truing stand. So as far as I'm concerned, this video is done. We have built us a wheel. It's not quite finished, but we've certainly built it and we're almost there. So in our next video, we'll put it on the truing stand, which is right there, and we'll true it up. You want to show the truing stand, Mike? We're going to put it on that and, and get this wheel trued up. So until then, I'm obviously not riding this one yet, but I'll see you out on the road.